Hello there, it's me, Rama, and I wanted to take this this static mesh custom actor one step further, and we're actually going to change its color randomly as well. On the material instance, we already had a parameter called color. That's a vector parameter. Get, where is it? Set vector parameter value, and this is called color. I'll show you what it looks like in a second. And we're actually going to set this color parameter from a new variable, which is going to be a linear color. Let's type in linear color, right? And then we're going to save. Now, the default value, well, first of all, let's call it uh, color. Ah, uh, mesh color. I can spell, kind of. I can capitalize, too. <laughs> So we're going to call this mesh color, we're going to expose it, and we're going to set it right here. This is the same process we did with the scalar parameter value, and this is going to be the mesh color. Now, we're going to randomly initialize this value, and then instead of calling this update brightness, let's call this, let's call this update, update loaded vars, we'll call it. All right. And so we've created the material instance, and we've now set brightness and also color. However, mesh color is not yet being saved as part of this actor. So we have to go over to the to this Rama save component, and you have to come over here to this list. This again is my list of actor variables that you want to save, and you click and you just type in, you can type it in, or I prefer to just copy it. Again, make sure, it's worth reiterating, that appearance show friendly variable names is turned off. Then you can copy and paste with impunity, meaning it'll actually work. All right, now go over to the event graph, and, well, actually, we don't really have to. That was all you had to do. All you had to do was add mesh color here, and now this variable this mesh color is going to get saved and loaded by my save system. And this event here is going to make sure that the mesh color gets reinitialized. All right, but now we have to go over to where we're creating these meshes randomly. Over here, this is when I press the K key, I'm creating the meshes and randomly orientating them. Now, let's make sure we actually set this linear color value. So set mesh color, right? I'm going to set the mesh color. Now here, we're going to plug in, we're going to say split struct pin. We're going to take random values from 0 to 3, and we're going to plug that in for red, green, and blue. All right, then we're going to run it through, and then update our loaded variables because we're just randomly initializing the mesh. Again, in the, the static mesh uh, material, we have this parameter called color. All right, and then again, in case you want to review over here, I'm setting the parameter here, the color. All right, now let's go in game and see this change. So now I have, wow, oh, because sometimes the brightness and the color are combining too. Dude, this is getting really entertaining. <laughs> so now I can make a rainbow. You knew it was coming. As soon as you saw a video series of me, you knew I'd end up with a rainbow by the time I was done. I'll be honest, I didn't plan this one. Now I'm stuck. All right, so I don't know how well you or I is going to be able to memorize this um, rainbow arrangement, but let's just put one right here. That's kind of a boring one. Let's put one right here. That's pretty cool. All right, let's at least remember that, the position of this one. So we're by, we're on the top here, there's that, and then there's this ocean of pleasantness. Now I'm going to save it. Now I'm going to restart the level, or actually exit out. You could pretend I close the editor. Actually, I'll just do it. Close the editor. Save all. Close the editor. All right ready over here. Now I'm going to reload. I could even restart my computer, but that would take a long time and the recording would stop. But recording is still going. Name of the project is JoySave. It's just my test project. All you need is the plugin. In case you were curious, you want to see it, the plugin, Rama Save System right there. That's the plugin. Which you can also see over here. Project. Rama, Rama save system. All right. 
Ready? Let's reload all that rainbow prettiness. One, two, three, go! Look! It's here! The rainbow is in the building. So that thing is still there, the one that we memorized. Everything else is still here. You can rewind the video and check if you want. I particularly remember this purple one. So that... So imagine if you more intentionally placed all this level geometry or even had an in-game editor that did it and you had all these kind of values you wanted to save. I'd like you to review how simple the steps are for saving and loading using my system. All you really need is you need, if it's a more complex, you need to update the state of the actor. You have your custom event that actually updates based on the two variables. The two variables have to be saved as part of the component my component and these again are actor variables stored in your actor list and then you have to click on Rama save and make sure that you're implementing this event after the actor is fully loaded now update the variables and these are the two variables and that was all you had to do to then be able to do this except I got stuck <laughs> let's not end up in the middle there we go to do this to dynamically load the whole world, which again you could have placed much more meticulously or programmatically. I was just goofing around. Let's add a new one just for fun before we go. Well, let's add one right here. That one's also kind of the same color. Alright, there we go. That one's cool. Alright, let's save that. Let's exit out. Or restart actually. And then, ready? One, two, three, go! And there they are. The two new ones. Alright, that one. And then that one. And that is how you do complex saving and loading of an actor using my save system very simply. Enjoy!